Hey guys, Eric here with The Garage Games to talk to you about the Masters Tour 2015. So, 2014 in the books, we had a great year with multiple events, primarily in the southeast. We brought some of you guys in from Colorado and up north. This year, oh, we're going to have a whole lot more, a whole lot more. But I want to talk to you about the wads and the standards. Wad number one, the couplet. Of course, last year we had a couplet of deadlifts and box jumps. We don't want to leave the couplet out. We like it. This is also going to be a blasting, fast, short wad. A lot of hard work done in a little bit of time. This year we're going to do power cleans, which is a fantastic movement, isn't it? And then our burpees this year are going to be to a plate. We're not going to jump over a barbell. We are going to go to a plate. There is no time domain for this workout because it is a work focus. We are getting three reps done of each. Six reps, nine, 12, and done. The weights are going to be posted in the information section for the workouts because they will be different for every division. As you know, we've got divisions to help you compete at the level you belong. So 35 to 39, 40 to 44, 45 to 49, 50 to 54, 55 to 59, and finally 60 plus. And once again, just like last year, if you're 80 and you don't want to compete against those young, spry 60-year-olds, you email me and I will make a division for you. All right, and of course, RX and scale divisions. The standards for this wad, the power cleans, the bar comes from the floor every time, obviously. You're going to pull that bar up, and if you had to squat, you can. It's okay to receive it in a squat, but you're going to pull that bar up so that you're standing at full extension of the knee, the hips, and the barbell is resting against the shoulders, clavicles, chest. The elbows will finish in front of the barbell. That's how we know you got a full power clean. So that's the power clean. The next movement is the burpee, which is you dropping with your chest to the floor. And the chest for us is the nipple line or the base of the sternum, dropping to the point where it touches the floor. And then it's a two foot jump to land on a 45 pound bumper plate on two feet. So two feet jump, two feet landing. This is not a step, it's not one foot. And the reason why we don't let one foot jump is because that would then allow you to basically just step on the plate. So two feet jump, two feet land. We don't care how you come off of that plate. And we don't care about extension. Once you land with two feet, the rep counts. You could be bent over at your knees and at your hips as much as you want. That's fine. As, much, as long as you burpee and then jump from two feet, land on two feet on that plate, then you're good. So that was wad one. You're gonna enjoy that one. Wad two, the triplet this year. It's an eight minute AMRAP. The way this works, it's 50 wall balls, 30 snatches, and then you'll do pull-ups for reps in whatever remaining time you have. In the scale division, you have an option between pull-ups. So if you have pull-ups, do the pull-ups. The other option is gonna be wall ball goblet squats, meaning you'll hold that wall ball as a kettlebell would be held for a goblet squat and you will do squats for reps. The movement standards for this workout, wall balls. Every time we do a wall ball, we expect to see what? Hold that squat, your hip crease below the knee. When we initiate the wall ball movement, we have to pick up that ball to a full standing position and then drop into the squat. For the ball to count, it must show some space above the mark. So we have to see that you've cleared whatever mark that is. You'll see the heights are listed in the standard section of the written description for you. As long as the ball clears that mark, then the rep counts. You do not have to catch the ball. If you let the ball drop and you want to start the next rep, you can't catch it on the bounce. It must come to a rest on the ground. You pick it up and stand a full standing extension, and then again, initiate your squat. Snatches. These are power snatches, squat snatches, split snatches, muscle snatches, whatever you want to get the barbell from the floor to overhead in one motion. As long as the barbell clears the top of the head without pressing to that point, you can press out the rest of the way. 
if you are forced to turn that bar over before it clears the head to press it out, that is a no rep. So it has to clear the top of the head in one motion. It cannot pause at the rack position at all. There's no clean and jerking here. It's a complete snatch. Once at the top, that is full extension of the elbow, full extension of the shoulder, full extension of the hip, full extension of the knee. The rep counts. Dropping barbells must take place from the waist. So do not drop a barbell from overhead. Bring it down to the waist before you let that barbell come to the ground. All right, that is our snatch. Our last movement, pull-ups or wall ball squats. So pull-ups, uh, as we would always expect, the pull-up full extension at the bottom, uh, elbows completely released, and at the top, the chin is over the bar. That is our standard for the pull-up. The wall ball goblet squat is simply that you're holding a wall ball but you're holding it at your chest. It's not down at the stomach, at the abdomen, it's up at the chest. You're holding it tight to the chest. You squat full depth so that the crease of the hip, once again, is below the top of the knee. And then you come to a full standing extension at the top. And that is your standard for the second walk. The last workout this year we're doing is a chipper. It is a timed chipper. 50 thrusters, I know it sounds awful, 40 toes to bar, 30 wall ball overhead walking lunges, so you hold the wall ball over your head for the walking lunge, um, or actually it's walking or stationary lunge, I should say, sorry. And then lastly, we've got 20 burpees, yep, bringing it back, over the bar. So it's a pretty burpee intensive uh, competition for you masters this year, but you know what, what's better than being able to get up off the floor? I, mean, I don't want to be stuck on the floor, so there you go. The movement standards for this, 50 lovely thrusters. The barbell will come from the ground at initiation. You can squat clean to begin, or you can clean at the full standing position and then drop into the squat. Either way, for that first rep is fine. Your hip crease will be below the knee, and then you will finish with the barbell overhead in a position where you have full extension of the elbow, shoulder, hip, and knee. Once again, you do not have to pause in a locked out position at the top as long as that barbell hits full extension at one precise moment, then that rep will count. So 50 thrusters, rep out as many as you possibly can. You drop this barbell from the overhead position, and that is fine unless you are using a naked barbell, which will happen for some divisions. Once you're done with your thrusters, you move on to your toes to bar. In the toes to bar, you are holding onto a bar. We do not care what direction the grip is. It's up to you, overhand, underhand, mixed is fine. You will have a position of full extension where the elbow is unlocked, the shoulders are unlocked, and we wanna make sure that the heels are behind the bar, so behind the pull-up bar. The heels have to be behind the bar, that's the initiation, and then both toes touch the bar together. That is the standard for the toes to bar movement. The scaled movement is sit-ups, and that sit-up is as any sit-up would be. You're gonna have both hands reach behind the head, touch the floor, and then as you come up, you have to break the plane of perpendicular with your torso. So you go through that plane of perpendicular and your sit-up counts. The third movement we have are the wall ball overhead lunges. The ball is over your head held by two hands, not touching your head, not resting against the shoulder or the ear. It's above the head. And as long as you hold that bar overhead, you will lunge. The trailing knee touches the ground and then you come back to full standing extension if you're doing stationary. It's up to you how you do this. If you decide to do walking lunges, we do not need you to come to full standing extension. You simply are going to take steps. You are gonna have that trailing knee hit the ground. You will then take another step, trailing knee hits the ground. We don't care, you can do duck walking, that's fine. Whatever you need to do to be fast, it's gonna be okay. The last movement, 20 burpees over the bar. So just like we did burpees for uh, to the plate, uh, we are going to be burping over the bar, so the nipple line of the chest touches the floor, two foot jump, two foot land over the barbell. When you land is when the rep is complete, 
the final rep count of 20, and boom, you are done 2015 in the books. All right, guys, I've got some housekeeping for you. I wanna kinda of keep things straight so you know what's going on this year. First of all, you will register for every Masters Tour event this year as if you had no birthday after February 6, 2015. What I mean is, whatever your age is, as of February 6, 2015, that will be your registering age for the year. You can do multiple events. You can go out there and, and test yourself four, five, six, whatever times you want to to try to improve your score. And as you do that, we will take your best total score from any event. We don't take your best wad and combine them because that would mean that you could go and just do one wad and be real fresh for it. And then do, you know what I'm saying? So we have to go ahead and take the whole thing, but we'll do that. But you're going to be that same age all year long this year. All right. So remember that. Same age, February 6, 2015. All right, cool. Now something else, I've had a lot of requests for people to get involved with sponsoring the Masters Tour because, well, they, they know that you guys all have lots of money. So that's pretty cool. So they want to sponsor and give you things. And so, hey, if you happen to be one of those people and you're looking for a way to do that, the best way to do that is to reach out directly to me at D-R-E-R-I-C, Dr. Eric, at thegaragegames.com. Awesome, guys. I appreciate you so much. I know that you probably feel like me some, where things are getting stiff and tight and you know, but we just fight on and we battle on and competition is our friend. I love you.